Uh, Presiding officer, on Monday, the BBC revealed that the NHS crisis created by this government had got so bad that health leaders had discussed charging for treatment. In response, the health secretary said that was abhorrent. But the truth is, there is already a two-tier healthcare system in Scotland. Can the First Minister tell the Chamber how many procedures were carried out in private hospitals in Scotland in the past year? First Minister, um, I will provide that uh, precise figure, but as I've just said to Douglas Ross, uh, the people who self-fund for private uh, care in Scotland is lower uh, than it is in England, significantly lower, uh, and actually it's even more significantly lower in Scotland than it is where Labour is in government in Wales. That is the reality. Uh, because we protect our National Health Service in these difficult times, and we always uh, will. Uh, Anna Sarwar talks about paying for treatment. Uh, let me repeat, this was the government that abolished prescription charges, something that Labour had many opportunities over many years to do uh, and failed completely to do. So just as I won't take them uh, from the Conservatives, I'll not take no lessons from Labour on the founding principles of our National Health Service. Anna Sarwar. Perhaps the First Minister will want to take lessons from the people having to actually pay for treatment in Scotland. Absolutely. There were over 39,000 patients treated privately in Scotland in the past year. That does not include the many private treatments carried out in individual clinics like dental surgeries. The number of people now paying for treatment without health insurance has increased by 72%. Often these are people who are forced to borrow money turn to family and friends, or even remortgage their homes to get health care that should be free at the point of need. So I know the First Minister doesn't like facts, but let's look at the facts. Almost 2,000 people have gone for private treatment for endoscopies and colonoscopies. Privately, these treatments cost an average of £1,195. Over 7,800 people have gone private for a cataract surgery, average cost £2,660. And a staggering 3,500 people have had a hip or knee replacement in a private hospital, average cost £12,500. These figures make clear that under the SNP, healthcare in Scotland is already a two tier system. So, does the First Minister accept that this goes against the founding principles of our NHS, a universal healthcare system free at the point of need? First Minister. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't accept that, and I don't accept we have a two-tier uh, health system in Scotland. Uh, we will always act to protect the founding principles, and we've done uh, more than any other government uh, to achieve that. Uh, the one thing that was missing completely from Anna Sarwar's question there, of course, uh, was reference to a global pandemic that caused the cancellation and the pausing of elected services in our National Health Service for a considerable period of time. Uh, that's why we've seen an increase in those figures in recent years, but these figures remain significantly below the comparable figures in England and in Wales, where, let me remind Anna Sarwa, his own party yep. is actually in government and running the National Health Service. As we continue to progress the NHS recovery plan, uh, get more operations done, and within waiting times in the National Health Service, we will continue uh, to see the benefits of NHS care free at the point of need for everyone across Scotland. Anna Sarwar. The, the First Minister just wants to deny the facts. I don't think the pandemic is a good enough excuse to say because it was a pandemic, it means it's okay for you to have to go privately to go and pay for treatment. The First Minister denies we have a two-tier system. In 2021, 40% of all hip and knee replacements that happened in Scotland were paid for privately. 40%! That's 3,430 people paying privately to get a hip or knee replacement. Our NHS is at risk because of this government's choices and this government's crisis. After 15 years in government, there is no one else to blame. Take responsibility for your record. Hospital beds, cut. Nursing and midwifery training places, cut. Record long waits in A&E, 750,000 Scots on an NHS waiting list and people forced to go into debt, to go private, undermining the very principles of our National Health Service, the Labour Party and our country's greatest ever public service achievement. And doesn't it get clearer every single day that our NHS is not safe in SNP hands? First Minister. 
Well, we have record, record numbers of people working in our National Health Service, significantly more than when this government took office and significantly more proportionately than any other part of the UK, including where Labour is in government yeah. in Wales. Um, and in terms uh, of how we're responding, Anna Sarwar says the pandemic shouldn't be used as an excuse. I agree with that, but nor can it be ignored in terms of the impact on our National yeah. Health Service. So all of the figures he quotes, uh, he takes no account of that impact of a global pandemic on our National Health Service. But what are we doing? We're building up the capacity of our NHS. So I referred in response to Douglas Ross to one of the things I did when I was Health Secretary, brought back in to public ownership, Stracathro yep. Hospital, which had been privatised yep. by the last Labour yeah. administration. Uh -huh. uh, more exactly. recently, earlier Jackie Bailey, of course, was a member of that administration. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier this year, uh, we have brought another private sector hospital at Carrick Glen in Ayrshire into public ownership. Yep. That facility will be developed to become one of our new national treatment centres, building up the elective capacity of our NHS to treat more people. Uh, that's the practical action this government is taking, and we are taking that and always will take that uh, while we protect the founding principles of our National Health Service. Yep.